not talked about and what we need to talk about, one of the greatest events in our history that I allude to in the book, the nature of our resistance to oppression. That resistance was most successful in the 19th century. In fact, the 19th century in the African world was the most responsible century of African people outside of Africa and a very responsible century within Africa. This is why. In Africa, you had 100 years of anti-colonial wars. These African kings, mistakenly called chiefs, went to war against some of the finest armies of Europe and out general some of the finest men of Europe and some of their finest soldiers. These wars started in different parts of Africa, the Asante Wars in West Africa, the Zulu Wars in South Africa, the Mahdi Wars in the Sudan and, and uh, Somalia, the wars led by Muslim Africans in the upper West Africa. One war led by Seka Toure's grandfather, Samare Toure. The leaders of these resistance movements should be heroes in our textbook. We should write poems about it. our children to recite that name. Our children should be named after some of them. Some of them were Muslims. We always take Arab Muslim names. When are we going to take some African Muslim names? We have to always be Abdul or something. But there were Africans who used Islam as a rallying cry against colonialism. And there was Africans who converted missionary training Christianity into a, con into a rallying cry against colonialism and for independence. And when we came down to the end of the 19th century, the last of these great wars was fought by a woman, Ye Asante Wa. Now, all of the wars were not fought by women, and I'm not trying to start a conflict between men and women, so please don't, don't misunderstand me. I'm saying that some of the most magnificent of these wars were fought by women, and I'm saying this because in Africa, where you were not afraid of women until Western man told you to be, you were not bothered by a woman riding at the head of an army. And you created the female God and presented no problem. When Western man, who still hasn't adjusted to women having any power and authority at all, told you that women threaten you by having authority, then you became threatened. Well, in our society, it operates differently. Right now, if women pull out of our churches, they have to close the doors because they run them <laughs> behind the scene anyway. They elect a minister. Go and elect a new. Those deacons go home and consult their wives as to who's going to be the next pastor. They better. But what my, my point is that women played a major role in these resistance movements while Kojo, who led the Maroons in Jamaica, played a major role in this war. His sister, Granny Nanny, also played a major role. There's a town in Jamaica named after her right now. And in the Gold Coast, later Ghana, after the British had exiled King Prempe, the country was taken over by Ye Asantewa, who led the last of the Asante Wars. Then in Southern Africa, while Chaka was probably the, one of the finest military leaders in all Africa. 
He was mother-oriented, and it was the encouragement of his mother, Nanda, that he fought some of these wars, and on her death, he ordered 15,000 men to guard her grave for a year. He maimed the cows so the cows could mourn for her. One of the finest tributes a man ever paid to a woman who gave him birth. All this is forgotten. We've forgotten the uh, railroad wars in southwest Africa, now Namibia. The Germans drove 60,000 women out into the desert, told them cohabit or die. They wanted to create a bastard race they can use as a buffer. They did not know African culture so because Herrera women at that time did not cohabit with outside of that tribal group, not even with other Africans. The Germans didn't seem to know this. And King Mendume unified that country and rescued those women. He lost a hundred thousand people but he brought those women home. This is one of the most beautiful tributes that were paid to black women, and yet we, we don't have any children's books about this great event in history. We have no songs about it. And our children are now worshiping synthetic heroes who don't look like them. One of the reasons why the Caribbean revolutions were so successful one of the reasons why the African Revolution was successful because the African had control of the land, the geography, the space. He knew the rivers, the gullies. Press of fact, he was the majority. One of the main reasons why the Caribbean Revolt was successful is that they could maintain an African culture continuity. The slave master bought in large lots and kept the lots together. He thought he could work them better that way. They could also revolt better that way. <laughs> they still maintain their African language. In the Haitian Revolution, after the death of Toussaint, Christophe went to Leclerc, Napoleon's cousin, who had exiled Toussaint. And as naive Toussaint was, he, he went like a gentleman because he wanted to become a part of France. The inter integration is better studied, Toussaint. He wanted to become a part of France, a servant of the French Empire. They kidnapped him and starved him to death. And when uh, Christophe, who was streetwise for his day, had fought in the American Revolution as a mercenary soldier, when he went to see Leclerc, he marched a company of soldiers into his living room and surrounded the house with 3,000 soldiers and said, Monsieur Leclerc, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> we'll take a break on that note and we'll come right back. We're in the GBE Live from the world-famous Apollo Theater. Our guest is Dr. John Henry Clark. Notes for an African world revolution, part of our theme for the month of January, Living the Dream. We'll come back with more right after this. Right now, Sears has all regularly priced furniture on sale. It's a sale so big that if you can find any piece of furniture that's not on sale, it's free. Plus, there are many special purchase items that are also exceptional values. Get to Sears now for great buys on sofas, sleepers, dining rooms, bedrooms, and recliners, mattresses, all on sale at Sears. If you find anything that's not a special purchase or not on sale, it's yours for free. But hurry, because this sale ends Saturday. Furniture available at most Sears locations. If your best friend's dad was a dermatologist, if your dad was a dermatologist, if you dated the dermatologist, you still couldn't get a stronger brand of benzoyl peroxide than Oxy-10. Yes, Oxy-10 is powerful enough to oxycute pimples. Used to direct it, Oxy helps clear zits away or you don't pay. Promise. For guaranteed details, call 1-800-950-1103. Keep this simple. You got a pimple? Oxycute it. It's here. The deal you've been waiting for on the tires you've been looking for. The Goodyear Buy 3 Get the 4th Tire Free Sale. Featuring Goodyear's famous all-season performance plus radio, Eagle GT Plus 4. Buy 3, get the 4th Tire Free. And Goodyear's best-selling all-season radio, Arriva. Buy 3, get the 4th Tire Free. The Goodyear Buy 3, get the 4th Tire Free Sale is here. But it won't be here long. Sale ends January 25th at participating retailers. 
When people at work find out that B8 has only 35 calories and is rich in vitamins A and C, they say... Wow, I could have had a V8 at the office. When they learn that V8 is 100% vegetable juice, so it has no fat and no cholesterol, they say... Wow, I should have had a V8 with lunch. Well, we say, instead of going woulda, coulda, shoulda, have a V8 and feel good about yourself. It's delicious over ice. <laughs> Try it and you'll say... Wow, it's never too late to have a V8. January 1992. Eight years since the formation of the African National Congress of South Africa. The vast majority of Africans in South Africa exist in material conditions which predate 1912. In which direction is the ANC taking the African struggle? Is it making too many concessions to the white supremacy regime? Why are some groups boycotting the peace talks? Is the ANC itself changing directions? Join South African author Dr. Bernard Magubani, activist Ilombe Brath, attorney Wilhelm Joseph of the National Conference of Black Lawyers, and Kingsley Makubela, Deputy Representative of the African National Congress to the UN for a frank discussion of the ANC's policies and the struggle in South Africa. Saturday, January 11th, 4 p.m. at PS 167, located at 1025 Eastern Parkway and Schenectady Avenue in Brooklyn. That's this Saturday to examine eight years of ANC policy. For more information, call 629-2498. That's 718-629-2498. We're back live for the World Famous Apollo Theater 1255 inside of the GBX at 1256, about 40 minutes uh, before the hour of 1 o'clock. And I see the uh, cop brother, uh, Minister Clemson Brown, uh, <laughs> off guard there too. Uh, Minister Brown is uh, commemorating, as he usually does, these kinds of events, and this is certainly one today uh, with Professor John Henry Clark putting it to video. Uh, the book, again, is Notes for an African World Revolution. I already have my copy, but I have two copies here. Now, one copy is for the radio audience, okay, and one copy is for the live audience. Excuse me, brother, did you say something? Did y'all say, what's the question? I mean, are, are y'all in a bold mood today? Is, is that what I hear? What's the question, M. Hotep? Talk to us. Well, it's not going to be my question. <laughs> the question is going to come from Professor Clark. So we'll see how you can deal with this question. Professor Clark, uh, we'll start with our live audience. Uh, what would your question be for the live audience? Well, for the live audience, the question will be, um, Kwame Nkrumah returned to Ghana in, 1950, in 1947 after approximately 10 years in the United States and a number of years in England. In England, he had attended the Fifth Pan-African Congress in Manchester, England, 1945. The Fifth Pan-African Congress set in motion the African independence conscious. The convener of that conference was George Padmore, Kwame Nkrumah, W.E.B. Du Bois, and some other activists. Who convened the first Pan-African Congress, 1900. Now, y'all was bold before now. You got to, like, show me some energy here. <laughs> you know, they were just so bold before you said, we'll come up and answer it. All right, good. All right, we got 12.57. We're going to give a couple of people a chance to respond before we go to the 1 o'clock news. And those of you in the radio audience, have no fear. When we come back, we'll pose the question for you at home listening to the GBE today, too. But let's hear, let's give a couple of people a shot at this particular question before we go towards news. Go right ahead. I say, uh, Mark is dog. Would you repeat that again? Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey. The audience told him no. Dr. Clark didn't even have to respond. All right. <laughs> Next up. Go right ahead, my brother. Is it W.E. Du Bois? No. Mm, no. Okay. All right. Process of elimination is at work here, though. Everybody's going to get a little closer. Go right ahead, brother. Is it uh, George Padmore from Trinidad? George Padmore Trinidad. Not him either. Okay. One more before we go towards uh, the, the top of the aisle. This is it CLR, James? Interesting guess, though. Interesting. Okay. All right. So we, 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 we've, got, we've got question one on deck. And so you understand what's happening. Those of you in the live audience, uh, I don't, I don't want to see anybody running across the street to the mart. Uh, 
running over to, to Amon Ron Isis, trying to get a book real quick, right, to get that answer. Mm -hmm. So stand by, because we'll give you the chance to respond. Oh, you think you have it before we go to news? No, no, you can't call it out. You have to come over so we can see you and hear what you have to say. Here's another brother coming up to take a shot at it, too. Go right ahead. What's the hell is the last thing? Okay. Sylvester Williams? She's right. Would you say that again, sister? One second. Uh, Sylvester Williams. Sylvester Williams. H. Sylvester Williams. H. Sylvester Williams. She is correct. Give it up. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Go back to that mic. I want to talk to you a minute. <laughs> Why don't you go to that mic for a moment? Let's just make sure we know who you are and all that. The sister held her hands up like the heavyweight champion. She said, I did it. <laughs> uh, my name is Makita Embe. And Makita Embe. Thank you. Where are you from, Makita? Brooklyn. From Brooklyn. All right. Well, you are a winner. Congratulations to you. Thank you. Thank you, my sister. Sante said, okay, we'll go to news at the top of the hour. When we come back, the telephone audience will get their chance uh, from Professor John Henry Clark inside of the GBE, which will continue with seeds, and also we'll give you the chance to talk with Dr. Clark as well. 692-9542-1800-332-1023. Those of you in the live audience will get a chance to talk with Dr. Clark as well as our broadcast continues. It's a dream come true. Professor John Henry Clark in the GBE all day long. I love it. We'll come back with more right after this. In the Caribbean and South America with the most successful, the most numerous ones were those in the United States. And they did not succeed because Africans in this country were surrounded and they did not have the mobility that people had in the Caribbean islands and in South America. They did not have access to the forests and access to the rivers. Early in the 18th century, there were three um, revolutions. Three great slave, the best known of the three slave revolts. One 19, no, 1800, 1822, the best known. 1831, name the leader of the slave revolt, 1822. All right, name the leader of the slave revolt in 1822. That is for our telephone audience. It's 692-9542 and the nationwide toll-free number 1-800-332-1023. We'll start with our live audience with a sister who has a question or comment for Dr. Clark while we line up our telephone calls. Just a comment. Um, I wanted to say, 40 years ago, I got this book from the shows, Rebellion in Rhyme by John Hendrick Clark. <laughs> oh my god and it's brought me such joy and sadness too that times have not changed okay mm. at that time i didn't know you dr clark and i've come to know you through the years bert fitzgerald had you signed this book for me back in 65 and you know who did golden legacy and um let's see uh, four years ago at um i saw you know we we chatted and i told you about it but i just want to share with you and with our our family how much i appreciate you my children my family how much we love you and thank you so much and you have a collector's item sister yes. all right yes. that's Good. the um the first edition and the book was published in 1948 and at that time, you could get a book published privately for $360 that I borrowed from a beautiful lady from Barbados who's still alive and reminded me of a mink coat that I suppose that I never delivered. <laughs> now, what you go do with a mink coat in Barbados, I will never know. <laughs> That's why you didn't buy it, right, Dr. <laughs> I did pay her back up three... <laughs> 360. <laughs> but all the poems in the book were written between the A, except two, written between 18 and 26. I was drafted into the army at 26. And I stayed um, against my will, of course, four years, two months, 26 days. 
We're live from the world famous Apollo Theater Talk Radio 1190 WIB. We're setting up our telephone calls for the seeds question uh, that Dr. Clark has asked. We have several people who are standing by apparently uh, to take their chances to see if they can win the book. Uh, notes for an African world revolution, Africans at the crossroads. All right, you're on our line inside of the GBE with Professor John Hendrick Clark. Uh, your question or your response to his question, please. Hello, good afternoon. Hello. Hotep, you're in the air. And the name is Toussaint Louverture. Mm-hmm. And your response to the question? No, no, my name is Phil Warner. The name of the, the response to the question is Toussaint Louverture. Oh, I see. You're responding. That is incorrect. Thank you for your call, though. Talk Radio WIB. Good afternoon. You're in the air. Hello, you're in the air. Go right ahead, please. Hotel, guys. Hotel. Say hotel to the LIB family and to my other Dr. Clark, much respect and admiration. Okay, now the question was the leader of the three revolts that took place in the United States? No. What is the question? Dr. Again? Clark, would you repeat the question? The leader of, there were three revolts right. early in the 18th century. And the first revolt, 1800, the second revolt, 1822, and the third one, 1831. I want to know the name of the leader of the revolt, 1822. Did Mark Vesey? He's right. Whoa! <laughs> Give it up, he's right! <laughs> <laughs> What, my, my brother, what, yes. what, what's, your, what's your name, brother? My name is Jonathan Black. Jonathan Black. Yes. Jonathan on time. Uh, just a quick note here in relationship to this, and we get a chance to pose this question uh, to the other sister. Can you remember your first exposure to this particular information regarding Denmark, VC? Yes, I was very young. I have older brothers and sisters who grew up during the struggles of the late 60s, and as a child then, they put me in tune with my ancestry and my black history. Mm. You, do you remember your first thoughts when you uh, had a chance to read the Denmark VC story, your impressions? Well, I understand that he was, like in most of the cases, a man of the cloth, and he organized, I believe, in South Carolina, mm -hmm. and that he had a very large plan going, but at the time he was sold out, as it were in most cases. Okay, he we're had the best plan, really, and he was most intelligently thought out revolt, and Everything went wrong. The weather went wrong. The horse of the tide got loose, and they weren't ready. And, but the leader of the other revolt of 1900, 1800, was Gabriel Prosser, right. and the leader of the last revolt, uh, 1831, was Nat Turner. Hmm. To the caller, I want you to stand by on hold. Our engineers will get all of your vital information, but you are a winner of the book, Notes for an African World Revolution. Congratulations to you today. Thank you, brother. All right, brother. Sante Sana. Talk Radio, WLIB. Yeah, all right. 117, we're inside of the GBE Live at the Apollo. Those of you who are on the telephones who would like to talk with Dr. Clark, we'll certainly get your opportunity to do so. We'll continue and alternate between our live audience and the phones in the GBE. Good afternoon, brother. What's up, brother? What's up? Dr. Clark, I traveled over here to get my book signed, and uh, I appreciate your signature. So I got what I wanted when I came from New Jersey. But I do have a question. In your book, you says, um, it says, because there is a point where the Bible departs from history because it becomes fable or folklore. If you know your true history, you know the points of departure. Some of the parts in the Bible can be proven, and some parts of the Bible cannot be sustained at all because the Bible is nothing but Jewish fairy tale. The Bible in general is a Jewish survival book and a very good one. And the Jewish people in general are people who invented themselves and they did a very good job of it. Now you went on a little further to prove that the Exodus did not take place. I would like you to reiterate that. That's on page 254 and 255 for those who already have the book. Well, if you want to find out whether the Exodus uh, did take place, you search the literature of Egypt during that period. There's no record of that many people leaving Egypt. There's no record of a pharaoh chasing anybody across any river. <laughs> you go on the other side of the river, there's no record of that many people arriving. Then you look at Egyptian literature and there's a three-volume work from the University of California it just came out. And you will see the original story of the parting of the seas. You see where they copied the story from. And besides, at that time, there was a 16-mile land bridge 
connecting Africa with Western Asia because Western Asia was then an extension of Africa. Nobody had to go by sea. You could walk in or walk out. People, all people tell stories about themselves to make themselves feel good about themselves. We just haven't done enough of it. Mm. Have you ever heard the John Henry stories in the South and how John the Conqueror stories? How John the Conqueror always come and do things we can't do. Say, man, didn't you see how John slapped that white man? He ran like a jackrabbit. Mm. That's what we want to do. So we create a mythological character called Hi John, let him do it. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the Bible stories came about the same way. Talk Radio, WLIB. We'll go right again to live audience and then we'll go right back to the phone. Uh, Hotep to our elder. Um, again, I don't, I won't, I refrain from using the title doctor. I think it's more appropriate to use Nana. Nana Clark, uh, I recently won a a book here um, on a question uh, who inspired uh, Marcus Garvey to uh, come over here. Now I gave you the correct answer which was Booker T. But I sometimes wonder how important was Hubert Harris in, in, in uh, bringing uh, Marcus uh, Well no, Hubert Harrison why did not invite Marcus Garvey. Hubert Harrison introduced Marcus Garvey to his first large audience in New York. And Hubert Harrison was a friend of Marcus Garvey. And in my way of thinking, Hubert Harrison was a sharper thinker and a better speaker. Thank you, Nana. A, a, a note here, Dr. Clark, on that point of uh, Marcus Garvey and Booker T. Washington, if you can comment about that. No, Marcus Garvey wanted to come to America, see if he could raise money to start a school in Jamaica similar to Tuskegee. He did not get the money together soon enough. And when Marcus Garvey arrived in 1916, Booker T. Washington had died the previous year. Marcus Garvey could not get along with Major Moulton and, and some of the people that left behind by Booker T. Washington. He became very disenchanted with them. And then he began to make a tour. But Marcus Garvey originally intended to come to America, raise some money, and go back to Jamaica. And he stayed and he made a tour of the United States, 1917 and 1919. And during the Red Summer and the riots, he was the one who went to Chicago and helped to rally the blacks to fight back against those riots. In 1920, he called his a conference at Old Madison Square Garden, 30,000 people a day, and he turned, turned away 30,000. And his movement was on the way. We'll take a break and we'll come back to our telephones inside of the GBE with Professor John Henry Clark, live from the world-famous Apollo Theater and Talk Radio 1190 WLIB. More right after this. It's Super Bowl party time. By now, you probably heard Lisa Guyton, the wife of Myron Guyton of the Giants, ask you to include Dirty Red Hot in your Super Bowl party because Dirty Red Hot is helping her favorite NFL charity, the United Negro College Fund, right here in New York. Well, now there's yet another reason to try the smooth one. Dirty Red Hot and WLIB want to give you a Red Hot Super Bowl party. Imagine watching the Super Bowl party with all your friends enjoying delicious Super Bowl party food made with Dirty Red Hot, of course. And you don't have to cook a thing because you had $300 to have it all completely catered. But that's not all. There's not a bad seat in your house because you were given a brand new color television set. All you have to do to be eligible to win is send in a Dirty Red Hot label or a 3 by 5 card with the words Dirty Red Hot, the smooth one, to WLIB by January 19th. The battle on the field will be hot, but your Super Bowl party will be red hot thanks to WLIB and Dirty Red Hot Sauce. When my back gets out of whack, I need more than a rub. I need results. For over 70 years, millions of backache sufferers have learned to rely on DeWitt's pills for fast, effective relief. DeWitt's pills get me up and going again, like nothing else I've tried. DeWitt's pills contain five active ingredients to relieve minor backache like no other preparation. So next time your back needs more than a rub, do as millions do. 
demand to wits. If you're suffering from a wretched cold or the flu, let's talk numbers. Let's talk millions of people who've relied on just one cold remedy. Let's talk three sixes. With the multiple medicine formula that's strong to bring fast relief to all major cold and flu symptoms. Yes, let's talk three sixes cold medicine. Because it doesn't just talk, it delivers. Three sixes, the numbers you can count on in liquid or tablets. This is Minister Conrad Mohammed of Mohammed Mosque Number 7, inviting you to Mohammed Mosque Number 7 tonight. We will discuss the City College incident in further detail. This is part two of a, of a lecture we started on a Sunday. We will discuss the, what really happened at City College and the aftermath. Where do we go from here? This is a report tonight at Mohammed Mosque Number 7, located at 2033 Fifth Avenue, and that's at 125th Street. The number there is area code 212. 759-1297. We invite all of the black community of New York City to come and find out what happened at City College and where do we go from here. Thank you. We look forward to seeing you all there. Jerry We're back live. The world-famous Apollo Theater, Talk Radio 1190, WLIB. One of the highlights from uh, a bit earlier today with the uh, Grammy Awards nomination presentation apparently was a uh, cake that was presented to Dizzy Gillespie celebrating his 75th birthday. 75 years young, so we give it up for Diz today inside of the GBE. Yeah, it's all right. Also, uh, news that uh, Natalie Cole may be appearing here at the world-famous Apollo Theater. We'll have dates and information for you forthcoming. We're back inside of the GBE at 125, five minutes before news headlines coming up in the half hour. We'll continue with more from our telephone audience and our live audience as well. We'll bring the phone audience in right now. Thank you for joining us here in the GBE Live. Good afternoon with Professor Clark. Uh, yes. Uh, my first point is I would like to correct Dr. Clark on the name of Mr. Dangwa, the name is not J.P., it's J.B. Dangwa, Joseph Wachi Dangwa. Also, he had mentioned in his book about uh, some folks that were of the British ancestry. Uh, Hitchin Mills, Kisley Hayford, and uh, I believe Duncan Bruce. I would like him to at least give us a background on these people. Well, I didn't hear. Case of Hayford is the wo is the one word that I did hear. Uh, Case of Hayford and Hutchie Mills. Well, Mills, both Case of Hayford and Mills were, were mixed. But to the everlasting credit, the mixed people, the mulatto in Ghana, right. always took sides with the blacks. They never separated themselves into any kind of clique. The Quays and Brews were mixed. There's a whole lot of mixed people. And yet, uh, Casey Hayford's mentor was John Mansa Saba, uh, Saba yes. who was black. I mean, they never set themselves up as something separate and distinct from the rest of the population. They were as loyal as the rest of the population, as, as patriotic as the rest of the, patri uh, uh, the, rest of the population. I, in my opinion, Casey Hayford is the father of 20th century Ghanaian politics. Okay. To the caller, we thank you for your, your question and comment. Okay, bye. Talk Radio WIB, go right ahead, please. Uh, hi, family. Um, Professor Henry Clark, I have been uh, an adamant admirer of yours, and uh, you had, uh, you have always had a deep and profound influence on me and in my thinking and history. And my question is that um, I uh, was reading certain chapters of your book that I just recently purchased and um, African World Revolution. And uh, I am fascinated by the Zulu King Shaka and, and his purpose, you know, what uh, he tried to do in terms of unification and unifying our people, you know. Can you please elaborate on that? Okay. No, a lot of people think Chaka, big bad Chaka fought white people. He did not at all. He fought to consolidate Africans in order to save them from white domination. Mm -hmm. He was not understood in his time and he's not understood now. But had he succeeded, there'd been no South African situation because there'd been no whites uh, in South Africa in control. He had pinned them near the sea. 
and he was gradually working himself into a position he could either drive them away or into the sea. But the other people who, ha who he had to war on to bring under control didn't quite understand that. Now, had he succeeded, it would have been a different South Africa, mm. and a different Africa. There, there's a place, uh, uh, Dr. Clinton, to the caller, where, where we thank you for the question. There's a, a documentary that runs uh, pretty regularly, I mean, in terms of, of talking about black programming. Uh, very seldom we see much of this stuff ever hit television, but this documentary, it's not even a documentary, it's a dramatic portrayal of a Shaka Zulu, runs all the time. Well, it, it was made by the South African government, and the idea of the document is to let whites know that if Africans took over, this is what's in store for you. Mm. It's a propaganda piece. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it continues to run today in order, yeah. to, do, in order to do what, in your opinion? In order to um, alert the mind of the whites to the fact that the African call for independence might also be a call for their dispersion from Africa, which indeed, is, that is what it should be. <laughs> All right, a, a couple of quick notes uh, before we go to news headlines on the half hour. Uh, tomorrow, we have mentioned to you as well inside of the GBE, we'll be joined by attorney Alton Mannix, who will join us tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock. I want to draw your attention to that. Make sure that you are with us in tomorrow's GBE. And stand by, because there'll be more to come uh, this afternoon with Professor John Henry Clark. We have news headlines coming up in the half hour. Those of you in the telephone lines will come back. We'll be starting with you and also those of you in the live audience will have a chance to talk directly to our guests when we come back in the GBE, live from the Apollo at Talk Radio 1190 WLIB. It's 38 degrees at 1.30, and this is your home for black news and information, WLIB New York. Good afternoon, I'm Anthony Johnson, sitting in this afternoon for Wayne Gilbert. Let's take a quick check of news headlines this afternoon. Coming up at the top of the hour, we'll have an interview with the mother of the two African-American children who were attacked by a quartet of white teenagers in the Williamsburg section of the Bronx on Monday morning. Dominic Carter paid her a visit and says the two children are doing well. Meanwhile, Governor Mario Cuomo is delivering his State of the State address at this hour to the legislature in Albany. The future of the state's economic picture is not very bright, of course. The National Abortion Rights Action League says New York women are among the most likely to keep their right to have an abortion, even if the Supreme Court overturns Roe v. Wade. And the league's ranking of the country's 50 states based on their availabil availability rather, of safe legal abortions, Louisiana, Utah, Missouri, were among the states most likely to make abortion illegal if the 19-year-old case is overturned. Cuban authorities say they've captured three armed men from the U.S. trying to infiltrate the country. A Cuban news agency reports that the three men were captured two weeks ago trying to enter the country 60 miles east of Havana. Reports say the three will face trial in Cuba. And although President Bush collapsed last night in Japan, officials say there is no need for the transfer of power to Vice President Dan Quayle. Immediately after Bush suffered an attack of the stomach flu, Quayle was notified through official channels. The weather for this afternoon, mostly sunny. Highs will be in the low 30s, or rather low 40s. For tonight, mostly clear. Early, then increasing cloudiness, low around 30. For tomorrow, rain likely... <coughs> excuse me, low, uh, rather high, 40 to 45. It might be kind of tricky, actually, tomorrow morning with the cold temperatures tonight and the rain coming in or the precipitation coming in early in the morning, so do be careful if you're out on the roads early in the morning. Current temperature right now in New York City is 38 degrees. I'm Anthony Johnson, sitting in this afternoon for Wayne Gilman. Now, let's go back up to the Apollo Theater and the new GBE.
Hi, I'm Belle, and this is my husband, Jim. And we've come to CBS to get our holiday pictures developed. So we can see our baby, Jeffrey, opening all his presents. He's an angel. He really is. Well, you know, at CBS, you get a double set of jumbo prints or a single set of jumbo prints and a new roll of film for one low price. Oh, oh we'll, we'll take, take the, the film. film. The double prints, Jim, so we can see our dumpling rubbing his eyes after we woke him up at 5 in the morning. The roll of film, Val, for new pictures of our budgie woodgie playing with all the toys we got him. Oh, he was so cute. And now, Jim, we don't want Jeffy Wetty to be disappointed in Daddy Waddy. I think he'd want the double print. But, Val, new pictures will just make us love the little num 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 even more. And Daddy Waddy knows best. Well, how do we choose? Let's let Goopy Head decide for himself. Oh, Jeffy Pie, which would you rather have? The great big double print or the brand new roll of film? I don't know, Dad. But would you please stop calling me Jeffy Pie? I'm 25 years old. <laughs> breast of African-American news in your community is easy. It's all in Big Red News, on sale at your newsstand every Friday morning. Big Red News prides itself on serving the community, and we are serious about keeping our readers informed. That's why Big Red News offers you every week important international, national, and local news, as well as happenings in entertainment, sports, business, education, and health. This week, Big Red News reports on three anti-Gulf War protesters who were recently acquitted of assault and disorderly conduct. Just in time for Kwanzaa, while local political analyst Jim Robinson makes predictions for 92. Yes, it's all here. At halftime, during the Super Bowl, guess what's on the other channel? Fox and Doritos are throwing a halftime party with the cast of TVs in living color, live, including men on football. This is so nice to see male bonding. Look at new bite-sized Doritos tortilla chips for your game piece, and you can win a million dollars during the in living color super halftime party, live, during the Super Bowl. But it's on the other channel, Fox. No purchase necessary. Game ends March 28, 1992. See store for details. The world-renowned historian, Dr. Ivan Van Sertema, the author of the book that came before Columbus, will be the lecturer in the Timbuktu Learning Center. Dr. Van Sertema will speak on the subject, The Golden Age of the Moors. The program will take place at 7 p.m. at the historic House of the Lord Church, 415 Atlantic Avenue, this Wednesday, January the 8th. At 6 p.m., the Reverend Herbert Daughtry will be teaching a class on a viable faith for these times. Dinners will be served, the book market will be open. That's this Wednesday at 8, this Wednesday the 8th, 7 p.m. Don't forget now, see you there. For further information, you can call 596-1991. That's area code 718-596-1991. See you this Wednesday in the Timbuktu Learning Center. Gary Bird. We are back live at the world-famous Apollo Theater Talk Radio 1190, WLIB, January 8th, 1992. You're inside of the GBE about 24 minutes before 2 o'clock, and that's 24 minutes before Mark Rowley and Mark Time coming up this afternoon between 2 and 6 at Talk Radio 1190, WLIB. Let us welcome back our guest, our honored elder, Professor John Henry Clark, live at the world-famous Apollo. All right, telephone lines. I know you're standing by, paying AT&T lots of money. We'll try to get you in as quickly as possible. Go right ahead, please. You're in the air. Thank you for joining us. All right, good. Uh, sister, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, hi, Dr. Clark. Um, hi. I was like, one of the reasons that I came today is really to hear, um, hear you talk about the history of black people, you know, and it's, it's like I'm real nervous. Um, That's okay. Take your time. Yeah, you know, I really want to thank you. You know, from like opening my head up to like a lot of things because um, as I was coming up, it was like I was neglected of a lot of things in school. You know, and um, today it's like I'm able to talk about it, and and it's, it's like I see now um, what my parents and my parents was lacking in. You know, um, today the schools changed just a little bit because when I was coming up. I went all the way up to the 10th grade without knowing how to read. You know what I'm saying? And, um, and what happened, people got hold of me, black people, and they set me down, and they taught me, you know? And, and they told me, this is the thing you have to teach yourself because they don't want us to learn. You know, and, and I was always afraid. I was afraid, but I didn't know how to let somebody know that I needed help, you know? 
until it got to a point somebody pulled me aside and they helped me and they taught me how to teach myself you know um and that's what i see that was lacking you know it's it's like i'm learning so much about me because when i was coming up i felt like i was so ugly you know i felt like being dark was disgrace you know what i'm saying being poor was terrible you know but as i'm getting the age i am now and it's like i'm still a baby because i'm mm. still learning yeah you know yeah. And, and um give it up <laughs> yeah And the things that I hear that's happening to black children and what I see that's going on, I feel like it's happening to me and it hurts, you know? And I be talking to some of my sponsors and I be telling them, well, when are we gonna fight? You know, when? You know, it's like, my idea is like, I got so much anger in me towards the white man, what he be doing. And so like, I wanna get a Uzi and I just wanna clean up. But I know I can't do it alone. You know what I'm saying? I know I need knowledge to back up what I want to do. And that I don't have yet. I only have a little bit. Let's, let's let Dr. You Clark know? respond to, to your emotions and your points and so forth. And we thank you for sharing. This is sad. This whole society the control of images, the control of the hero has been geared to make us think less of ourselves, make us lose our confidence. The best thing for people to regain is their self-confidence and their image of God as they originally conceived he or she to be. And we of the people who had no problem with the she because we invented the she. Mm -hmm. 